McLaren. Now, McLaren, faced with a de delicate political confrontation with a sports governing body, have been keen to keep Ayrton Senna away from the press in recent weeks, but he gave Sportsnight a revealing interview during pre-season testing at Estoril last week. A chance to reflect on the bad feeling that remains from a controversial 1989 season. The atmosphere within the McLaren team last year was wrecked at Imola San Marino Grand Prix. Alain Prost claiming Senna broke a gentleman's agreement by overtaking after the first corner. From then on, it was war. In October, the famous incident at Suzuka, Senna had to get past Prost to keep his championship hopes alive. This is the opportunity that Senna's looking for, and he's going through. Ouch! Oh my goodness, this is fantastic! They meet, and that means to say that Prost has won the world championship. Not to Senna's way of thinking he hadn't. Alain Prost's first reaction was to get out of the car and consider the race and the championship over. Senna rejoined the race via bypassing the chicane. Although the Brazilian went on to win the race, that incident forced his disqualification. Senna's reaction was to accuse the governing body FISA of rigging the championship. FISA's reaction came via the volatile Jean-Marie Balestre. This page of uh, your, your friend uh, Otto Sport, 26th October this week, civil war over world, world title. Visa withheld Senna's license until he'd apologized for his rigged championship statement. The apology was a long time coming and not exactly wholehearted. But last week, McLaren and Senna proved their worth to Formula One. A big crowd came to Estoril just to watch him test. It seems there's a very uneasy piece in the championship, but during the bleak recent days, had Senna genuinely considered quitting Formula One? I have not only considered, I have uh, put forward a proposal on the last minute uh, this month in February uh, that uh, I was prepared to stop in order that all the parties involved it, as far as McLaren was concerned and Honda and all the sponsors would have automatically end on this dispute and uh, everything would be quiet the other option was to go on and fight but I, I, I present those two options both to Ron Dennis and to Mr. Kawamoto, the vice president of Honda for them to decide, to, to, to make a decision, and whichever were, was their decision, I would go along completely in peace. Your instinct is to go on and fight there? Of course, my instinct is to go and fight because I think uh, it's in my personality, my character, that uh, if you believe in something, if you have principles, uh, you go to it right to the end. And until you, everything is not over, you don't give up. You make it sound as if you're not approaching the new season with your usual enthusiasm. I think uh, you never, you never repeat things. You never go through the same feelings. And uh, year after year, you get more experience. You get older as well. And uh, your expectations and your feelings also get changed. I wouldn't be saying the truth if I say, no, my motivation is exactly the same. It's not the same, it has changed, but um, I'm also professional and uh, I know I'm a part of a great effort in order to win, to, to be successful. And um, I'm sure when it comes down, I'm sitting in the car and driving, like I, I did today, I will perform to my best ability. I'll be doing my very best, not only for myself, but for everybody involved. Uh, that's how I intend to approach the 1990 season. The impression that we always get about your motivation, legendary motivation almost, 100% determination to win, uh, an almost computer-like approach to the sport has been described. Uh, do you relish that description? I think uh, perhaps because of my education and my attitude, People tend to put things in the direction of computer and robot and things like this, and this is not quite true. I, I am sure that the people who really know me, the people who really work with me close, that understand my feelings all day long, you know, during all weekend, 
of racing, they know that is very different. What I try to do is to detach myself from all the outside distractions that can occur in order that I can concentrate deeper and focus into my job, into my driving, into my setting up the car. And uh, most people see it as a robot and computer program, and this is not the case. I have lots of emotions and lots of feelings inside, and I just try to control them as much as possible to not allow mistakes to come out or distractions to be around me. What are the emotions that you feel in a racing car, the emotions that you're trying to control? Well, the desire to go faster and faster all the time, the, 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 the desire to, to be ahead, to be the fastest, and to be successful, and to win, of course, not only races, but the championship. And that gets translated in many occasions into uh, angry, you know, situations that are present to you, frustrations, um, a hunger of getting something or getting somebody that is playing around uh, but uh, you have to put it all together somehow and is that true is there an element of that or or is that just our misinterpretation in many occasions yes because when you feel like people are playing silly games stupid games uh, it's a human instinct to go and, and get them but uh, i suppose most drivers have it once we are fighting there in order to win and fighting so close, the competition brings out those kinds of things. But, uh, I guess the degree of, that we all experience that is perhaps different than most athletes because we are also playing with a dangerous activity. We have a machine that goes very fast and can be a very dangerous thing, not only for you but for other people. So we expose ourselves to danger much more than anybody. And we are used to be at, at the edge than any, more than anybody. And that feeling of edge and danger is something very attractive, as, as well um, uh, difficult to control, to not go over it, and to be close to it, but not over it. To what element, then, is, is fear an emotion you feel inside the car? Is that an important emotion to feel? It determines your limits. Of course, if you don't if you have any fear, you, your limits would be different and probably you would get hurt quite easy. I think fear is a very important feeling, fundamental feeling of self-preservation. Would you say that you have less fear inside a cockpit than other drivers may be around you? I don't know how much fear they have. I, I know that I have enough to keep me in control and to keep me as healthy as I am. A further accusation from FISA was that Senna has driven dangerously over a long period. Other drivers like Nigel Mansell might support that. Senna colliding with Mansell in the Estoril black flag incident. This was Senna in the opening round last year, Brazilian Grand Prix, and a crash at the very first corner with Gerhard Berger. People say he rarely concedes a corner and hates to be overtaken. Here's how he reacts to that. One thing I'm sure I, I have had all my life a very, very strong and good education. And from that education I have got, uh, again, clear and strong principles of, in way of behaving. And that's where I'm guided for. I come, I use those lines and those guidelines to move as a man, as a professional. And, uh, and I don't regret anything I just uh, feel I'm doing things for the right reason. Some understand, some don't. In the end, you never get everybody to understand and to agree and to accept. But most of them, I'm sure, uh, uh, admire, after all, what I'm doing as, as a professional and as a man. Um, and as, as many drivers do, we are exposing our lives there consistently. Uh, and the reason for it is only one, is to succeed, is to win, is to get the thrill when you cross the finish line in the first place. Religion is an important part of your life. Is it an important part of your sporting life as well? Religion has always been part of my life, has become 
even more important over the past two years, or just under the last two years. And it's again, it's, it, it gives me the peace and the equilibrium that uh, I need to perform at, uh, under stress, under pressure, um, all the time. And uh, I have found through God a special way of living and a special way of uh, understanding many things in life which I didn't have before I, 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 I really start to understand what God is all about. Senna suffers in comparison to the relaxed image of other drivers. Alain Prost is approachable and doesn't seem to be dominated by the sport quite like Senna. The same could be said of Nigel Mansell, who certainly can match Senna for motivation, but has the kind of family support that helps keep things in perspective. For the 1990 season, Senna is joined at McLaren by Gerhard Berger, who knows all about the dangers of the sport and will only reluctantly settle for second best. You only rarely see Senna playing the glamorous role at the race circuits of the world, but for 1990, he's weighed up the opposition, decided who he respects and who he admires, and reached a surprise conclusion. Well, you may find it funny, because I have lots of criticisms from some of, some of those that I'll mention. I admire a lot um, uh, Prost by his results. I admire a lot uh, Mansell by his determination, his results too. Uh, we have difference many areas, but that doesn't change the, the fact that they have achieved great results. They have achieved um, great situations, which you've got to admire, you've got to respect. And um, and I admire other drivers like uh, Butsen as a friend too, you know, as a good self-balanced um, man, and many others. You mentioned Nigel Mansell, you mentioned Alain Prost. How is it, we know the specific incidents involved, of course, but how is it, do you think, that that battle seemed to endure over the whole of the 89 season, that atmosphere existed? Well, I think uh, in, in such a sport where ego is always under pressure, under question, it's difficult for people to maintain balance all the time and not be influenced by the press, by the media, by some friends, or by some people who are called friends, you know, and end up making wrong judgments and wrong decisions. I made mistakes. You know, I'm not cleaning all of that. I have made mistakes, but uh, one thing that I am sure I, the mistakes I have done were in good faith and never in a way of thinking of destroying and damaging others. I'm not so sure if that has been the same case from other people towards to me. For the 1990 season you've got a new teammate in Gerhard Berger. What, what are the important elements of, of a teammate? What do you require from a teammate in the context of the team? First of all, lots of respect and, um, and, and, and a good education. I think if you have those two things then together with the technical knowledge which requ is required in order to have a good car set up and development then you have the ingredients to have a good both professional and personal relationship i think i have been through difficult situations as far as relationship is concerned with other teammates so did gerhard we both understand the difficulties we both experience the difficulties and we're both aware that we got to give a special effort, a good try in order to give both of us and the team uh, a positive environment in which to work. And that was a benefit for it as far as motivation is concerned, as far as technical knowledge, information to be exchanged, and, and have a better time. What has gone before uh, has clearly uh, affected your build-up to the season. Finally, how confused are you about the situation as you, as you head for Phoenix?
one thing I have got clear, very clear in my mind is that uh, uh, now I want to be in Phoenix, I want to be racing there, and I want to race the whole championship. I want to fight it right from the beginning to the end to my best ability and uh, give a very good shot to get my second world title. Everything else is past has not been forgotten, but it's past. And I hope to use it as a good experience in order to prevent it happening again in the future. How can you do that? You're going to head for Phoenix, the press are going to besiege you, you're going to be put in a very uncomfortable position about the things you say, once again being misinterpreted. It's going to be a tough few weeks, isn't it? Well, it's part of it. I think this is a price you pay for being uh, a driver from the most successful team over the past few years, being a driver that uh, has won and has been in front so many times over the past few years, and somebody that has got some personality and some character too, then he, people just want to know what, your, what, the, what are your thoughts and your actions. If you weren't that, people wouldn't bother to know what you're doing. So it's a price I have to pay. Ayrton Senna choosing his words with care, as well he might. The governing body are yet to officially give him his license for the forthcoming season, but expect to see him on the front row for the U.S. Grand Prix.